Sabbath. I'll sing uh, a chorus. Leave your faith to Jesus' name be true. Leave your faith, the world is watching you. Now's the time to spread the Father truth. Jesus calls for dedicated you. Light the world, set it aflame. Spread afar, Messiah's name. To the task, be brave, be true. Live your faith, light the world, God needs you. This morning, I would like to talk uh, to you about something I've titled, My Servant Job. Job is here. Well, actually, have you considered My Servant Job? That should have been the title. The end of a year and the beginning of uh, a new one is a time of retrospection, a time of looking back into the past and looking forward into the future. It's a time of making resolutions and see how they go as the year rolls on. Actually, it's a time of absolute considerations. It is worth at this time, at a point in time such as this, to consider the words of the God of heaven about one of his servants here on earth. Have you considered my servant Job? In the book of Job, we read about a man who lived in the land of Oz. His name was Job, so his name is actually the, uh, the name of the book. He was a man with a great household. He had ten children, seven sons, and three daughters. A lot of slaves, a great number of oxen, camels, uh, named them. And his seven sons, or his sons, would often, uh, they would take turns to hold feasts in one another's house. And they would invite their sisters to feast with them. When the days of feasting were over, Job would arise early in the morning and offer sacrifices, saying that maybe any of his children might have cursed the Lord. One day there was uh, a dialogue between Satan and the God of heaven over the faithfulness of Job. Satan actually argued that uh, Job was faithful to God because God had blessed him. He had protected all that he had. God allowed Satan, he gave him the permission to tempt Job in every way possible to prove his faithfulness. Satan caused Job to lose all that he had and also to lose his health as well. But in it all, he was faithful to the Lord. His friends heard of his flight and came from far away country, far away places, to comfort him. But it turned the other way around. You can have the full story when you read the 42 chapters of uh, the book titled Job. This morning, I, want, <clears throat> I would like us to look at some of the thoughts that we can have from this story and uh, that might be of help to us as we have also embarked on a year-long journey that's a life we continue our lives and it's a new year in the first place <clears throat> if you look at the bible the bible gives uh, a not so pleasant picture about humanity the apostle paul says all have sinned and come short of the glory of god you can read that in Romans 3.23. Jeremiah also describes the human heart as being desperately wicked, beyond imagination. Isaiah also comments about our righteousness as being as filthy rats in the sight of God. Looking at this picture, it makes me wonder how Job could have such a good testimonial, a wonderful testimonial from the God of heaven himself. What is being said about this man? He was a man blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. 
So going back to the treatment of the sin problem in the Bible, we get an answer what might have gone on in him. Job might have uh, really accepted his sinful nature. He might have seen his need of a savior and accepted by faith the gift of righteousness through the Son Jesus Christ. What went on in Job was evident in also how he related to the people in his household and to those outside. He was benevolent to people in his household and also to the people who were outside. Also look at Job. When the days of feasting were over for his children, he would arise and offer burnt offerings for their sins, for sins they might have committed. He knew how offensive sin was in the sight of God. So he prayed for <coughs> forgiveness of sins for his children. Like Job, we can also agonize in prayer for our relatives, for our family members. We can pray for believing ones that they keep the faith, and for unbelieving ones that they also come to accept the truth. And the God of heaven would honor such prayers. We might not see response or we might not see answers being realized in our lifetime, but even after our death, the Bible says the prayers of the righteous man will be will be realized even after he's passed and gone. Looking at that story, there are also certain things which uh, might be worth looking at. Satan was asked uh, by God, where have you been? And the response of Satan is worth no noting. If you look at Job 1, 7, the Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from roaming through the earth and going back and forth in it. What is the devil doing? He's roaming through the earth, going back and forth in it. To do what? When he roams about, he roams to cause havoc. He roams to cause pain and distress. He roams to cause destruction. He roams to cause us even to disbelieve the love of God. But God does not leave us with a caution if we turn our Bibles to 1 Peter 5 verses 8 and 9. 1 Peter chapter 5 verses 8 and 9. Please if you have found you could read for us. <laughs> Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Amen. So be self-controlled and alert enemy prowls like a roaring lion looking for someone to destroy. And Paul also talks about it. He said, we wrestle not against blood and flesh, but against principalities in the high places. There's a funny story uh, in our country. There was a, a madman who always walked around, even during the day, with a lit lamp lantern. And when people ask him why he would carry a lantern during the day. This man would tell them the world is really dark. If you knew how dark the world is, you would have even looked for bigger lanterns than what I'm having now. It sounds funny, but the world is what? It's dark. Sin is make the world so dark. We don't need to carry along our work with us, lit lanterns, lanterns like this person, like the madman, but we need to walk in the light of our salvation. We need to watch and pray. Growing up, uh, I grew up in the family of my sister, and she used to sing a song, which I'll play the words to keep <coughs> in my ears. It goes like this. Christian, seek not yet repose. Cast thy dreams of ease away. Pray that help may be sent down. 
Watch and pray. Watch and pray. And so it's time for us to really be up to watch and pray. Because the devil is roaming about just to cause distraction, to cause souls to be lost. But there is also this side of the coin, which is also the positive side. He roams the earth, but then, but then the God of heaven is also what? Everywhere. He is also roaming the earth with his eyes, with his might, ready to vindicate the pure in heart. So that's good news for us. The psalmist also says that the eye of the Lord is upon the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. So that's good news of for us. But the, you need, we need to remain under the shelter of our Heavenly Father. The devil knows that when he lures out of the protection of God, then he can have us in his graves. Now, another thing in the story, when God uh, brings to Atten uh, the Satan's attention, the faithfulness of Job. Job, uh, Satan says something. So let's go back to the book of Job. Job chapter 1, verse 9. That's the response of Satan. Job chapter 1 verse 9. The question was, have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Then the devil's response, does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, have you not put a hedge around him? and his household and everything he has, you have blessed the work of his hands, so that his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. So the devil, one thing I see, and one thing that he believes is that when God creates a hedge, he can never trespass. He can only work within the perimeters that the Lord allows him. And that is good news for us. When the Lord has promised that he will not allow us to be tempted beyond what? we can bear. So if he doesn't allow anything, it would never come to pass. And that is good news. The devil is really aware of, of that. If you stand by the seaside, um, on the shore of the sea, the waves, they come, they are so high, they are so, I don't know, furious, but when they reach the shore, they always go back. The psalmist says that Lord, the Lord has set a head, I mean, um, kind of border for the waves. When they come, they have to go back. There is a limit to what the devil can do. He knows he can never trespass the hedge the Lord has set over around his children. The psalmist says, the angel of the Lord encompasseth around those who, fears, who fear him, and he delivers them. So once he is on our side, who can be against us? Now, another thing that uh, I would also want us to look at is the devil said Job was faithful to God because the Lord has blessed him, because things were going on well for him. But was it actually the case? Uh, if we look at the temptation he brought, we saw that it wasn't so. And also for us, are we faithful to the Lord or do we serve him because things are going on well? When things don't go the way that we want, uh, do we think that it is not worth serving him? And Job was faithful to the Lord in good times as well as in bad times. Another thing also we can look at is that is Job's response when he faced all the trials or when the trials started coming his way, when he was suffering. If you look at Job 1, Job 1, verses 20 to 22, 
Job 1, 20 to 22. At this point, Job got up and tore his robes and, sh and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. God is the creator and giver of all that there is. We are just stewards of what we have. To each person on earth, he gives our bodies, he gives, he gives us our bodies, he gives us time, he gives us talents, things that we are, abilities that we have, things we are able to do more than other people. He gives us our possessions to take care of. And a day is coming that we would be given, would be asked to give an account of all that we have. Job saw that uh, God is the creator. He is the owner of all that there is. He is just a steward. He gave them the, the possessions that he had, the things that he had, the children that he had. They were a trust from the Lord. So when he lost everything, he said, naturally, he grieved. You see, he, he, he mourned the death of his children. It's natural. He's also a human being. He felt the pain. But he still, he rose up and worshipped the Lord. And also for us, all that we have, they are a trust from the Lord. What happens when we lose something? It's, it's, as human beings, we will grieve. We would uh, feel the pain. But then we know that the Lord gave us, and if he takes, it is all praises. He knows what is best for us. The other thing that I would also want us to look at is uh, mm. through all that Job, all that Job was going through, he didn't understand everything. But in it all, he remained faithful to the Lord. One, uh, one uh, famous quotation from Job's, <coughs> from the book of Job is, he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. He didn't understand what was happening, but he remained faithful. <coughs> he continued to trust in the Lord. There were times that he also, I'm sure he had his moments of disbelief, <coughs> but then his faith was constant, we would say. The moments of disbelief were, they were just moments. He remained faithful to the Lord. And uh, Job, through all the discourses from Job, from his friends, the Lord of heaven revealed himself. But when God revealed himself, he didn't come to tell Job that this is why you were suffering. What did he do? He revealed his holiness, his majesty. And that was enough for Job. Sometimes we might also be going through difficult times. We might also be going through trials. We might not understand everything that is happening, but we can always keep the Lord before us. As the psalmist says, I've put the Lord in front of me. The Lord is on my right hand, and I shall never be moved. We can always be assured that He is there. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's this line from our song, I need thee every hour. I like that one of the uh, lines in the verse it said, Temptations lose their power when you are near. Whatever we are going through, when we remember that the Most High God is still on His throne, it, it helps to keep things under control. And His hand, His mighty hand is holding us. So as we go through our life's journey, this year. Let us not forget that he who uh, slumbers not and sleeps not watches over us every time and he's in control. There were also Job's friends who came when they heard of all this, uh, the great suffering, the plight of Job, they came with the idea of comforting Job. But they ended up what? Making things worse for Job. Actually, the general idea, the general belief was that uh, righteous people, they do well, and people who are sinful suffer. So they could not actually uh, accept what was happening, that Job uh, 
could be suffering such if he were not a sinner. But then, the God of, God of heaven was not pleased with what the, brother, the friends of Job, what they did to Job. God revealed himself and he spoke that he was angry with the friends about what they did. There are times we are eager to fight for ourselves. We want to, the Lord has said that vengeance is mine and he will repay. But there are times we want to fight for ourselves. We want to vindicate ourselves. It is needed at times, but vengeance is the Lord. He is the one who vindicates us. Looking at that story, I see that uh, God never uh, overlooks. He never overlooks whatever happens to any of his child. He comes in at the right time to make things right. So let us leave, do what we have to do and leave it in the hands of him to order for us. God said he was angry and with the, uh, the friends because they didn't speak well of him. And here Job had to learn another lesson in God's kingdom. Forgiveness, I think. They wronged him. They spoke ill of him. So a sin against him and also a sin against God. And God told Job to offer sacrifices for these friends so that his anger would not be kindled against them. Here we have the command to pray for our enemies, to do good to them, to bless them. So he needed to be reminded of that lesson one more time. And what happened after he prayed? He said right after that, his sufferings came to an end. So I could see that uh, if we harbor iniquity in our hearts, truly the Lord cannot hear us. As we forgive, he forgives us. He wants us to be at peace with all people at all times, no matter what. Now Job went through difficult times, but the hand of the Lord held him throughout. And when it was all over, God gave him uh, more a double portion of what he had in the, from the beginning. God gave him back his possessions, he had his children again, and he, it was a happy ending. He blessed him with what? Good days, a long life and whatever blessings we might think of, of having here on earth. And as uh, it said in the Bible, that the present suffering that we go through, I mean, they will be rewarded even beyond our imagination. So that is uh, another great promise for us, that no situation is bound to be permanent. Nothing, this too, my mother used to say, this too shall come to an end. There is a limit. But the Lord always holds us. As we go through our life's journey this year, and as we ponder uh, the life or the story of Job, there's also a, a, a word I would like to leave with you and with myself. God didn't promise days without pain, laughter without sorrow, sun without rain, but he did promise strength for the day, comfort for the tears, and light for the, for the way. If God brings you to it, he'll bring you through it. Let nothing perturb you, nothing frighten you. All things pass, God does not change. Patience achieves everything. May the Lord add his blessings in life.